everyone, Ron here. I wanted to uh, go over some uh, things on this old 955K. Uh, one thing I've noticed on YouTube is that um, when you're looking for how to fix things that's on there, but it doesn't give you anything about what to look for before buying something. Uh, so just to give you an idea of uh, if you were in the market for an old uh, track loader, track excavator, whatever they call them, uh, for farm use, uh, some things you might want to be in the know about. One thing, this thing is uh, filled with uh, oil. Uh, you got your engine. The engine takes uh, in the uh, oil tank and everything, there's uh, five gallons in there, so be aware of that when you change the oil, you're putting in five gallons. Uh, the transmission, it holds uh, 10 gallons of uh, 30 weight transmission oil. Then you've got the bevel gear. It holds another uh, five to eight gallons of oil. Uh, then you have the uh, uh, final drives. Now the final drives are uh, the items that run the uh, rear, run this rear wheel assembly here. And it sits right in this area here at the back of the, this is the final drive down in here. That takes uh, two and a half gallons of 50 weight oil on each side you got one on each side of the machine so it takes a lot of oil to uh, run this baby but uh, once you uh, keep it uh, maintained you're in pretty good shape with it one thing to watch out for when you're buying that uh, some people pointed out to me before I bought this and I was aware aware of uh, some of the ideas but I had to talk to people to find out was one your um, tracks on this thing you notice the uh, tracks, these are called grouser bars, and the grouser bars are uh, right here, and they, they stand up a little bit on it to give it a little traction. Uh, with bulldozers, they'll stand up about this high. You don't want your tracks on your track, uh, track loader to stand up too high because uh, this thing is made for pivoting. You push in pick up back up and pivot whereas a bulldozer you're always pushing forward or backing up pushing forward or backing up so that's one thing you got to be aware of another thing is these pins that hold this uh, hold your track to the chain that runs around the front idler wheel and the back sprocket what you want to be aware of is reach up underneath and on these pins you want to feel make sure they're not scalloped or worn out underneath uh, from where it runs across the sprocket. Now, the front idler wheel, you've got uh, on your front idler wheel here, you have a, a cylinder that sits in here, and underneath this protective cover, you've got a big coil spring. Uh, that spring weighs about 125 pounds. In order to keep tension on this idler wheel, you basically fill the thing with grease so there's a grease fitting here and you can see where I've put grease in it in the past but basically that grease fitting puts pressure on that cylinder and it pushes that idler wheel forward so that keeps tension on this idler wheel one thing you want to do is you want to make sure your track take a two before and lay across your track make sure at the lowest point underneath the two before you don't have more than two inches of uh, clearance but you don't want to have any less than two inches of clearance either so you want to keep it about there that keeps that track nice tight and tensioned then another thing you want to be aware of is you want to check your sprockets on the back make sure they're not worn and um, like I said this is where these pins roll in here and they roll up come across that sprocket so you want to make sure your sprockets are not broken or anything so that's just one or a few of the uh, things that you will uh, have be aware of when you're looking at an old machine this is called the undercarriage uh, i always thought the undercarriage was basically uh what but it's the belly pan up underneath uh, that protects the engine compartment the transmission and all the other gearing that's back in the back here. So, but it, this being the undercarriage uh, is what you want to be be look at. Most uh, undercarriages 
you'll see them listed as 50%. Uh, that means you've still got about 50% life in them. Another thing um, is when you want to check all your fluids and everything, um, on the other side, you can open up the engine compartment on top, a little a door access panel on top of the uh, engine compartment up there, and you can find your dipstick and pull that out. But if you're looking for your transmission and your bevel gear, uh, that's another uh, located at another place. Okay, now to show you where the transmission and bevel gear oil is located, I'm going to have to uh, pull this panel up underneath the seat uh, right here. This flips up. And you see two um, sticks, dipsticks over here. Uh, one, the front one is your transmission, the, the back one is your bevel oil, uh, bevel gear oil. So that's where those uh, actually sit underneath the seat. Uh, I saw a video one guy posted where he got one of these, he was fixing it up. He didn't know exactly what everything was for. So we'll go over the gearing and um, everything on this, the gears and the levers. On this side, this is your gearing first second and third it runs off of a planetary gear so you can put it in gear and run forward if you want to stop you just push it forward it puts it in neutral pull it over pull it down you're in reverse there is no clutch on this that's why it's run off a of planetary gear you have three pedals your left turn brake or basically it locks the left track and spins it to the to the left the center pedal is your brake the other pedal is your right to lock your right track so if you want to turn to the right you push that pedal in it'll lock that right track and the left track will continue to pull and pull you around to the right side so your throttle is here like I said your gear shift is here this is your raises your uh, front bucket raises it up and down your arms and this will tilt it uh, pull back on it to dump it pull up on it to tilt it up so uh, or push up on it to tilt it up so that's just some of the uh, items on these old uh, dozers well, the machine all, what you have to do is starve it of uh, fuel so you push forward on your throttle and that shuts her down then once you get that done then in here there is a disconnect for your batteries so you just turn that key and you turn your batteries off it's a 24 volt system your batteries sit in this compartment here you got your fuel tank on the back here it holds roughly 40 to 50 gallons of fuel and then this is your hydraulic tank over here with a sight glass on the side uh, for your hydraulics or loaders that you uh, might find I found them on uh, different uh, sites um, and I bought this one locally from a uh, individual so just some of uh, things to look out for when you uh, buy an old piece of equipment and you know you're not buying anything new and you may have to do a little work on it but one thing about these uh, heavy equipment items is that you do have to have someone that knows how to work on heavy equipment because like I said that uh, one spring was 125 pounds and in order to get it out and put in a new one you have to compress the new one to get it in there so I mean uh, with all that pressure on that spring it's something that can end up injuring you or killing you so you do have to be careful so hopefully this is some decent advice that you can take and use if you're in the market for buying an old piece of uh, equipment heavy duty equipment like i say this is just something to be aware of i hope you enjoyed and uh thank you for uh watching and see you later hope you have a good day bye <laughs>